When we apply a Puron to the relationships we have with other people, we discover the dissolution of our identity as a separate, isolated individual. Nowhere does the destructive power of opposites thinking manifest more clearly than in the social realm. Primo Levi writes in his introduction to Survival in Auschwitz, Many people, many nations, can find themselves holding, more or less wittingly, that every stranger is an enemy. For the most part, his conviction lies deep down like some latent infection. It betrays itself only in random, disconnected acts, but does not lie at the base of a system of reason. But when, do, but when this does come about, when the unspoken dogma becomes the major premise in a syllogism, then, at the end of the chain, there is disaster. Here is the product of a conception of the world carried rigorously to its logical conclusion. So long as the conception subsists, the conclusion remains to threaten us. The story of the death camps should be understood by everyone as a sinister alarm signal. In the realm of no boundary, we have no borders between nations, no barriers between races, no isolation between the sexes, no hostility between orientations, no religious fanaticism, no enemies and no friends, no aliens and no nationals, no strangers and no acquaintances. On the understanding of the no boundary condition of existence, compassion for all sentient existence flourishes. When we apply a Puron to the realm of opposites thinking, the opposites lose their boundaries and we perceive them as reflections of each other, as emerging from each other, as flowing into each other. We move beyond good and bad, beautiful and ugly, high and low, and the easy and the hard. Don't you find it interesting that of all the opposites Sang Song might have used to illustrate the boundaryless nature of mind, he uses the easy and the hard. I think he uses these opposites because they have application for meditation practice. A great paradox of meditation lies in its simplicity. What could one find easier than simply sitting? Yet when people first attempt it, they find it quite hard to do. A story from the teachings of layman Peng illustrates this. The layman sat in his thatched cottage one day. Difficult, 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 he suddenly exclaimed, like trying to scatter ten measure of sesame seed all over a tree. Easy, 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 returned Mrs. Peng, just like touching your feet to the ground when you get out of bed. Neither difficult nor easy, said their daughter, Lin Chao. On the hundred grass tips, you will find the ancestor's meaning. Not difficult and not easy, simply the no boundary world displaying itself as the gift of Sang Song and our ancestors in the lineage. The no boundaries nature of things emerges from Sang Song's deep understanding and his meditation. Every verse in the poem seeks to open our hearts to the condition of no boundary. This displays the meaning of Sang Song's compassion and his caring. May we take to our own hearts Sang Song's gift.